Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to all my listeners. I'm so happy to be recording again. And yeah, I've been a little bit away. I'm sorry for that. I haven't recorded for quite a while. A lot has, a lot has been happening in my own personal life. And also collectively, I think I wasn't really available for that. But here I am. For those of you who are new, this podcast is dedicated to discussing numerology in an in-depth manner as a path for inner transformation, for inner growth, for self-understanding. And my attempt is to make numerology accessible, grounded, and applicable for everyday life um, matters. Now, just a couple of points. Um, if you wish to get a numerology reading, um, you are welcome to contact me through the uh, website link provided in the episode description and also in the description of the podcast itself. For those of you who want to study numerology in a self-paced way, uh, there's a self-study numerology course that I've created. Again, you can find everything in that link. And lastly, if you happen to be one of those rare people who want to study numerology as a profession, go in-depth, you can study one-on-one -on -one with me and contact me directly through the website. Fantastic. Having said that, let us jump into today's episode. And the topic for today is about the karmic debt 14.5. So for those of you who haven't listened to the previous episodes about the karmic debt numbers, you're welcome to just scroll through the episodes of this podcast. This is going to be the last one in this series of karmic debt numbers. Um, there's also an episode that explains the whole concept of karmic debt numbers. So please just go ahead and listen to those episodes uh, get yourself updated and informed. It's a super interesting topic and also a very important one to understand as aspiring numerologists. Now, as an introduction, it's always important for me to mention that karmic debts are a unique and a challenging journey. They can appear either as one of our core numbers in our chart, but also as one of our long or short-term period cycles, such as, for example, a pinnacle or a personal year. Now, in this episode, we will learn what are the lessons of the 14.5 and what does it feel like to have a 14.5 life path and a personal year. So that's what we're going to focus on. Now, it's important to, to mention that karmic debts are challenging but aren't bad. So let's not tag them as bad. They are, they are a lesson to be learned, a lesson to be lived, to be understood, eventually to be mastered, and to become a gift to yourself and to the world. Since the focus of this episode is the karmic debt itself, and not the general number, right? Not five, but rather the karmic five, a 14-5, I'll naturally focus more on the challenges of the 14-5. But if you happen to have a 14-5 in your core chart, in your core numbers, don't worry. We will also talk about how the gift of the 14-5 looks like once the lesson is learned and cracked open. So just be patient with me as we go and don't be discouraged. We will start from the shadow and move slowly and gradually into the light. Okay, we will start with the 14.5 as a life path. Now, like all fives, also the 14.5 karmic debt is meant to learn the meaning of true freedom and change. 
They are pulled towards experimentation, living out of the box, and having a spirit of adventure. However, the only difference is that as a karmic debt, they will tend to gravitate to either a place of self-suffocation, where they don't let their natural life energies, joy, sensuality, sexuality flow, okay? Or, or find themselves in settings such as a family, a relationship, a culture that doesn't allow these energy to flow. That's one expression, one imbalanced expression of the 14.5. Or they will tend to overindulge, behave carelessly, be overly promiscuous, get too carried away, and get themselves in a lot of trouble. So this is by and large, right, that kind of like the, the general feeling and the general um, polarities that a 14.5 is going to move between. Now, the, of course, there's a great range of experiences can, that can um, take place in between. And often it's not a black and white picture. A person with a 14.5 life path is often going to move between those two extremes, sometimes more self-suffocating, sometimes more self-indulgent and... Um, like a little bit of both. Now let's let's kind of like unpack this a little further uh, and see how the 14.5 life path feels like, looks like, what are the experiences, what's happening there. Now the 14.5 personality will often have to struggle for their freedom. Um, it won't come as easily as a regular five. Now this is true for all karmic debt numbers in the sense that they all have to struggle to attain the the balanced quality of the single digit number they represent in this case a five so it's a little bit like an uphill journey you're you're starting off at the bottom of the hill you have to push your way up there are more limitations there are more constrictions there are more imbalances also to the to the other to the other extreme right like overindulging being super carried away and, and etc. And like, um, you 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 have to work harder to find the real meaning of freedom and, and that kind of like fine balance, that that middle ground. Now, sometimes, as I kind of already hinted at, they are born into circumstances that just very literally limit them, such as being born into a religious family that doesn't allow for adventure, experimentation needless to mention sexuality or or, or or religious societies or or very restricting regimes right like being born in a country where a man and a woman or cannot meet cannot be seen together in the street or gay people are not allowed or right so all the all, all the lgbt you know uh community is completely you know is seen as some kind of like disease or you know there are cultures like this today so being in that kind of experience is is can often be you know the 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 circumstances they find themselves in just the other day i gave um a reading to a woman in her 40s who who had twice a 14 5 in her core numbers and she told me how she used to be in a religious family in a religious community and she used to she and some of her friends used to sneak out when they were like uh, in high school uh, coming from a Jewish religious community, they used to wear like these long skirts and underneath they wore jeans. And they used to sneak out to clubs in the night without anybody seeing them and then take off those religious clothes and, you know, and party and, and, and try out sex and so on. But right, that kind of limiting um, surroundings or their societies that, you know, you have to be very, very careful, you know, meeting a man or a woman you can be murdered for having been with a man or, you know, your, your brother, say, will want to, will feel that you, uh, as a woman, perhaps, like, violated the, the, the dignity, you know, like, uh, the name of the family, and now you'll need to be, he will just murder you or murder the, the man you went with. This is kind of, you know, this is a very limiting circumstance. Um, they will also tend to feel guilty about their own sexual, sensual, and vital energies. And it will be at conflict with themselves. 
in a like in in another way to say it is like they will be their own imprisoner. Often it's gonna they're, they're gonna have like this struggle, okay? And 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 what happens? You're gonna often see that they will either turn into this kind of like very decadent, very dull way of living. Sitting in a park, smoking joint after joint with their like um with their speaker, listening to I don't know reggae music, chilling away, I don't know, just playing table tennis or ping pong right in the park for hours and hours, uh enjoying the sun and it seems free, but it's just decadent it's 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 like wasting their time, wasting their life because it's like their energy is actually blocked. It's not truly flowing. So that's like one thing that can happen. And, and part of it, again, happens from that sense of suffocation, as if I'm not allowed, I, I can't. I'm, I'm, there's some guilt, there's some, there's some sense of, of should, like a, a strong sense of I should, I need to. And, 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 and I cannot, don't, have, don't know how to work with these energies. I always feel like, and again, it comes from those previous lifetimes where I felt restricted and as if I... always have to kind of explain myself into freedom. I cannot just be free. Now, on the other hand, they will tend to rebel against all frameworks. And that's kind of the other, the other extreme. They're going to overindulge in sex. They're going to overindulge in drugs. They're going to be carried away super easily, um, sometimes to their own detriment, Right? Like not knowing when to stop, not knowing when to say no, being tempted, uh, cheating, um, and again, saying yes, 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 and eventually finding oneself in situations one really didn't expect to get into. So this is, again, like the other extreme. Um, they often won't be able to commit. It's like constantly changing from this to there, from there to here, moving a house, moving an apartment, changing a boyfriend, changing a girlfriend, uh, having this sexual experience. It's not enough. More sex, more drugs. Constant, constant inconsistency. Okay? The, 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 their, their constant is inconsistency. That's, that's kind of like a funny thing to say, but it's really true sometimes with a 14.5. So in a, in a sense, it's important to remember that for them, sometimes they won't know when to stop and, and where to set the boundaries. And, and as I said, will often get themselves into messy, into unwanted situations, even abusive ones. So that's something to really watch out for. It's very important for a life path 14.5 to, to learn that freedom... always has a price and that they should pay that price consciously and in a spirit of maturity. If you just contemplate for a short moment with me about like on the numbers one and four, right? That precede the five, 14, one, four, 14, five. One, four are, they're very responsible, integer numbers, very focused numbers. self-disciplined, responsible. So it's on the one hand, it kind of reflects the karma of past lives in the sense of like, I've been in more restrictive, you know, settings. And now I need to be that five, the freedom. But it can also reflect the potential, right? That I, my freedom is born out of responsibility, out of choice, out of focus, out of groundedness. out of a solid will and an ability to commit myself to my freedom, because freedom is not necessarily having all the options open, right? But not committing to any. Freedom is like, I am able to fully be where I am. If I'm never fully where I am, I'm never free. I'm constantly bound by the endless desires that like pull me and stretch me into so many directions. So that's like a big lesson to be learned here with this life path. They need to learn how to adapt to change without making hasty and irresponsible moves, right? So very often they're going to be tempted to have some kind of whim or a, a fleeting sense of, I don't know, a wish or what they would call an intuition or a gut feeling. But it's all going to be too quick and immature. It's all going to be... Um, 
Like, okay, we have to move away from this uh, apartment. I don't like it. I don't like the neighbor or somehow I just don't feel uh, this or that. It doesn't fit me in some way. And they're going to move after two months of being there. They're going to move to a new place and it's going to be all hectic. And then they're going to be in a new place. And again, just, you know, copy paste. Right? After a month, after two months, three months. Oh no, I don't know something about the, the, the walls here. I don't like something about the walls or the door or the ceiling or the, the, the scenery outside. Let's move. There's always some kind of reason, something that propels them to never commit, never stay where they are. So they need to learn to actually adapt to change in a mature way, to not make hasty moves that eventually, you know, end up being to their detriment. And as I said, it's super important for them to learn to release guilt feelings around their life force, release shame, release guilt, let go of feelings of like, I should do this or that, Uh, you know, and simply live, simply live. That's so so important for the 14.5. In previous incarnations, these people have, 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 have experienced very often limiting circumstances, such as what I mentioned earlier, limiting regimes, families, um, religious surroundings, societies, uh, 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 restricting parents or family, and so on. And in this life, they will work on discovering the real meaning of balanced immature freedom. So now that we've covered the 14.5 life path, let us move on and talk about the 14.5 as a personal year. It's going to be shorter. And let us remember that as a personal year, the 14.5 isn't as strong as a life path. Each one of us can have a 14.5 at some point in our life appearing as a personal year. But for that period of time, Um, it can be a pretty intense and challenging and even an important lesson to go through. And it will leave some impact on our future. So let's understand a little bit like what the experience of the personal year will, um, will entail. So this time in our life, a 14-5 personal year can bring a lot of change, right? A lot of dynamic change, a lot of fast-paced change. But it will often feel quite hectic or uncalled for, uninvited, sudden. It will feel harder or it will be harder to adapt to that change, sometimes to fit ourselves to the pace. Um, Or simply, you know, it's not going to happen in a smooth way. As I said, hectic is like the highlighted word here. At times... The price for change during this time will be or will feel painful or uncomfortable. So like the change can happen, for example, by someone else related to you uh, having changed their life. But they were closely tied to you and and your comfort and your um, ground and your home or whatever. And suddenly you have to adapt to a situation that is extremely uncomfortable even painful for you, and you simply have to suddenly, you know, or forcefully adapt to a new situation. Very often, there will be a mix of interesting doors and opportunities, you know, opening and coming our way, but that requires some effort on our behalf, right? So it's like that that's going to be like the opening factor of the five, on the one hand, right, opportunities, uh, connections, doors that open, uh, social interactions that are are um, kind of be- becoming more available, but it's not it's not coming as easily. It's like it will require in order for that to become like a real opened door or an opportunity that has become, you know, a real potential. We will have to push push uphill, as I said before, like we will have to to push harder, like activate that one and four energies, right? That precede the five, that focus, that that in, intention, so that eventually, as the year progresses, I can really feel and manifest that five energy, that energy of flow, that energy of creativity, freedom, spontaneity, etc. 
topics of sexuality, sensuality, uh, guilt around one's life force may pop up and ask for one's attention. So you might feel more like more energized, more aroused, but also again, more blocked on those same um, arenas. And you're gonna have to learn to deal with that, right? So it's like these topics suddenly come into your attention because these are collective topics. And, and at some point or another, we all deal with these topics. And a 14.5 is really one of those symbolic times for us to deal with this topic. You may be inclined to act more impulsively during a 14.5 year. Have, you, will, you might have sudden ups, sudden downs, as I said, like, right, sometimes a bit more restrictive, self-limiting. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're, you're just, you're just um, rushing too quickly, for example, to make a decision um, or to, uh, uh, I don't know, um, you rush into new connections, uh, you're dating too much. You know, you, you might find yourself again in that kind of haste that I was mentioning earlier. Or, as I said, self-limiting, like not letting oneself, feeling shame, guilt, a bit being a bit more close and, and kind of like... Um, contracted around these topics. So ups and downs, sudden ups, sudden downs. So to kind of sum it up, I want to say that as a personal year, the invitation of the Ford and Five is is to keep the balance straight during this year when it comes to freedom and change and adaptability. We want to find that middle ground, right? Like not rush too quickly, and not be too self-limiting. Just find that nice, solid, reliable middle ground. So after we've presented all of this, I want to describe the gift, the gift of the 14.5. What what is it eventually supposed to to manifest? And so the 14.5, is a gift of mature and responsible freedom. The one and the four that precede the five tell us that one can become a solid master of the energy of freedom, right? It's like being able to harness the energy of freedom in a responsible, in a mature, in a solid, in a grounded way instead of being carried away by a delusional sense of freedom. In a way, this becomes a unique and mature type of five as opposed to other fives. And that's the amazing thing about karmic debt numbers. Once worked through, suddenly this five becomes a five that is more masterful, more grounded, more mature, more responsible, and yet free. It becomes a role model of how freedom can can be had without compensating one's solid ground and sense of integrity and commitment. So let's remember that although the ride isn't always easy with karmic debt numbers, the purpose is always good. And if you work towards it, you will reap the rewards and become a beautiful role model of the gifts and powers of the 14.5. Fantastic, my friends. So with this, we've covered um, all karmic debt numbers. Again, I want to remind you, if you you have karmic debt numbers in your chart, go back to the episodes that you haven't listened to and, and dive deeper into the meaning of the karmic debt numbers. Super fascinating topic. And lastly, just to remind, for those of you who are really wanting to dive deeper into numerology, A, you can get a numerology reading from me. B, you can study in a self-paced manner numerology through my self-study course. And you can also study numerology in depth as an actual profession or simply on a professional level, one-on-one with me. And to do that, simply go into the link provided in the episode description or in the podcast description. Contact me and I will be very happy to answer you as soon as I can. Okay, my friends. Take care wherever you are, and I'll see you, as always, in the next episodes.
I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.